high-level debate of the 70th session of the United Nations General Assembly continues this Wednesday under the theme, The Future We Want, The United Nations We Need. U.S. President Donald Trump has announced new sanctions against Cuba, affecting imports and American tourists. Somalia's president has appointed a new prime minister hours after reaching an agreement with regional leaders to hold elections next year. From the headquarters of Teliso English in Havana, Cuba, this is from the south, and I'm Katrina Goss. The high-level general debate of the 75th session of the United Nations General Assembly continues this Wednesday under the theme, The Future We Want, The United Nations We Need. Heads of state and government continue to offer their statements on the second day of the high-level event. In his speech during the morning session this Wednesday, the King of Saudi Arabia, Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, called for peaceful coexistence and cooperation to tackle the challenges the world faces today, especially the COVID-19 pandemic. Meanwhile, the President of the Republic of Iraq, Baham Salil, underlined the importance of cooperation to ensure access to a COVID-19 vaccine once available for all. For his part, President of the Republic of Honduras, Juan Orlando Hernández Alvarado, expressed his concern regarding the multifaceted consequences of the current health crisis. The highest global geostrategic tensions in years. And also during the second day of the high-level UN general debate, the President of the Republic of Mozambique, Felipe Jacinto Nayusi, highlighted the importance of multilateralism moving forward. The theme of this General Assembly faithfully reflects the essence of the United Nations and is a call for renewal of the vision for an integrated and cooperative world where nations express themselves in an open manner and act in a coordinated way in promoting sustainable and inclusive development, taking the 2030 agenda as their banner. Mozambique therefore upholds the assumptions of common but differentiated responsibility as well as international agreed development goals in the light of the Paris Declaration on the Effectiveness of Development Aid. All this shows that multilateral cooperation remains the best approach to addressing the challenges and mitigating the suffering of the people who are the main reason for the creation of the United Nations. Mr. President, Excellencies, Mozambique welcomes and reiterates its support for the actions of the Secretary General aimed at reforming the United Nations in the areas of peace and security, peace operations, development, and management of the organization. Nevertheless, we are concerned about a lack of progress in the intergovernmental negotiations so that the reform of the Security Council will yield results in line with the 21st century. Also speaking before the UN General Assembly, the President of the People's Democratic Republic of Algeria, Abdel Majid Tebboun, expressed the need for a strong United Nations while also highlighting his country's support for the Palestinian cause. Mr. President, we need a strong United Nations. And we would like to underscore how important it is to uh, to continue implementing the uh, comprehensive reforms of in our organization in order to improve its performance and uh, enhance its um, effectiveness. Our country has constantly defended international peace and security. Our foreign policy has always been based on the values of peaceful resolution of conflicts non-interference in the internal affairs of states, respect for sovereignty and unity of states, as well as respect for the rights of peoples to uh, uh, determine their future wholehearted support. Now, as far as the Palestinian cause, uh, for Algeria, this remain, for it's Algeria and, it's, and our people, this is a sacred cause. It is perhaps the, the most important uh, issue and we would like to express our um, wholehearted support for the Palestinian people and for its uh, just uh, uh, cause and their rights of its people that should not be compromised. Lebanese President Michel Aoun, speaking before the United Nations this Wednesday, informed that an investigation is underway into the explosion at the port of Beirut and announced Israel's constant trespassing of Lebanese territory. 
A judicial investigator has been appointed and is carrying out the investigation. Immediately after the explosion, we asked for international technical assistance to help provide us with satellite images at the moment of the explosion and to discover the itinerary and history of the ammonium nitrate loaded vessel from its departure to its arrival at the Beirut port and to analyze the soil, materials and anything that might unveil what happened. We are still awaiting information about the mystery of the vessel and awaiting satellite images to clear the ambiguities in this part of the investigation. Israel must seize its land, sea and air violations of Lebanese sovereignty and stop trespassing in Lebanon's airspace, using it to strike Syrian territory. The international community must urge Israel to cooperate fully with UNIFIL, demarcate what's, what remains of the Blue Line and immediately withdraw from northern Rajar and the Sheba farms and the Kfarshuba hills. Lebanon emphasizes its absolute and full rights over its territorial waters, its natural oil and gas resources, and all of its maritime borders according to international law. The Argentine Movement of Solidarity with Cuba sent a letter to the government to request help from Cuba's Henry Weaver International Medical Brigades in order to tackle the COVID-19 pandemic. The request delivered to the President's residence bears the signatures of 200 organizations and personalities such as Nobel Peace Prize laureate Adolfo Perez Esquivel, the Argentine League for Human Rights, as well as several lawmakers, senators and trade union leaders. The organization expressed its concern about the pandemic and praised the efforts made by the government to avoid the collapse of the health system, as well as the work of Argentine medical personnel. However, they pointed out that Cuba's Henry Reeve International Medical Brigades, with their extraordinary experience, could collaborate with Argentinian public health professionals rather than compete with them and would become part of the united fight against a common en enemy. The College of Teachers of Chile requested that students do not return to face-to-face -face classes this year and urged the Education Minister Paul Figueroa to ensure a safe return to learning activities by 2021. In a statement, the Teachers Union noted that the country does not have the necessary conditions to reopen schools. In response to the Education Ministry's intentions to send those students who live in areas without active COVID-19 cases back to classrooms. Although the number of cases in the country is still on the rise, the minister insisted that 40 municipalities have not reported new infections. Therefore, he said over 40,000 students could now return to class. At the beginning of the pandemic, the ministry was reluctant to determine the suspension of face-to-face -face classes. Pressure from educational communities and municipalities forced the ministry to finally make the decision to close schools. <laughs> The economic crisis in Ecuador has dealt a heavier blow to the most disadvantaged sectors, unable to make a living. Meanwhile, the Lenin Moreno government claims its economic policies are softening the blow. Our correspondent Denise Herrera has the story. With the end of the state of emergency, Ecuador began the so-called new normality. Meanwhile, the economic situation remains a problem for the majority of Ecuadorians that believe that the government has had a poor performance in this matter. Nobody has helped us and nobody has helped us here in our neighborhood. I have kept this business for 15 years with the little money I saved. Now it's only enough for rent, water and electricity. Maria Dolores Laundromat is located in Foch Street in Quito, one of the busiest and more touristic points in the capital. Now it's empty streets and closed shops are part of the new normality. They are not going to help us even if they say they will, so we have to survive with what we can. The finance authorities have said that during the emergency, 19,785 jobs have been created through the sign financing system. However, the reality on the street is quite different. 
the truth is that we have felt alone because we have been working with each other, but we have not seen the authorities trying to help in the situation at this moment, in this pandemic, in these bars, in this small business that fight to survive every day. As you see, there are not many people in the area and still we are still on business. We try to do our best and we are waiting this situation to improve. We can get out of all this. The government's strategy has been to keep up with multilateral organisms' debt payment. According to the authorities, the financial relief generated by the debt strategy totals more than 4,000 million U.S. dollars for 2020 and 2021. However, workers keep protesting against the unpaid work, the closure of public companies, and dismissal of thousands of workers and teachers during the pandemic that has left more than one million people unemployed in the country. U.S. President Donald Trump announced new sanctions against Cuba on Wednesday that will affect imports and American tourists. The Treasury Department will ban Americans from staying at properties owned by the Cuban government, as well as the import of Cuban cigars and rum. Trump made the announcement at a White House event honoring veterans from the U.S.-sponsored Bay of Pigs invasion, the first defeat of the United States in Latin America in 1961. Since taking office in January 2017, Trump has moved to tighten restrictions on Cuba that were loosened by his Democratic predecessor, President Barack Obama. In June 2019, the Trump administration imposed heavy new restrictions on travel to Cuba, saying the move aimed to further pressure the Cuban government over its support for Venezuela's president, Nicolas Maduro. The latest move comes as Trump seeks to show up support from the far-right anti-Cuban sectors of Florida ahead of the November elections. We're also further restricting the importation of Cuban alcohol and Cuban tobacco. These actions will ensure that U.S. dollars do not fund the Cuban regime and go directly to the Cuban people. Big difference, big difference, really. We're also imposing strict sanctions on the dictatorships of Nicaragua and Venezuela. Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko was officially sworn in for another term this Wednesday after winning the elections of August 19th with 80% of the vote. The inauguration ceremony was held in the capital's Palace of Independence with the presence of several hundred guests, including lawmakers, members of the Council of the Republic, leaders of state bodies and social organizations. While taking his oath, Lukashenko pointed out that in the elections, the population not only elected the president, but also defended peace and sovereignty. He said he was assuming office with the pride of having a nation that had passed a test of resistance and strength. The European Union announced Wednesday a major overhaul of the rules in the hope that more countries will finally be prepared to share responsibility for refugees landing on Europe's shores. The proposal would push other EU members to help ease the load on countries like Greece, Italy, Malta and Spain, where most refugees arrive by sea, by taking in some of the asylum seekers or providing other material and logistical support. The migration pact proposals are sure to spark heated debate among member countries. Nevertheless, the Commission said it wants to the EU countries and the bloc's parliament to adopt the reforms by the end of this year. But what we are doing is we are putting Dublin to bed. And we start afresh with a new, much broader framework. And I would say, if you allow me the, uh, the self-congratulatory tone, a smarter uh, approach. What we are doing now is enlarging the criteria and we are creating a hierarchy of criteria which is new. It's not voluntary to uh, respond to the solidarity mechanism. It's mandatory for all member states at the end of the day to contribute to the solidarity mechanism. And the two main ways to do that is by relocation or return sponsorship. And the reason why it's put like this is that this is the challenge we have. Two-thirds of those irregular, irregular arrivals must be returned. And that's why it's important that member states also show solidarity when it comes to return sponsorship. Germany's cabinet has approved the 2021 budget that foresees significant borrowing for the second consecutive year as Europe's biggest economy tries to lessen the fallout of the coronavirus crisis. 
The budget plan calls for spending 413.4 billion euros next year, down from this year's exceptionally high 508 billion euros, a figure swollen by spending on rescue packages. Of the six years in the black, the government is borrowing 217 billion euros this year to finance rescue and stimulus packages and cover an expected shortfall in tax revenue. Next year's budget plan, approved by the Cabinet on Wednesday, calls for borrowing of 96 billion euros. Wir werden im nächsten Jahr deshalb noch mal einen außerordentlich großen Haushalt haben und zusätzliche Kredite aufnehmen von fast 100 Milliarden, genau über etwas über 96 Milliarden. Das ist sehr, sehr viel Geld, das wir nötig haben, um dazu beizutragen, dass die Konjunktur stabilisiert wird. Aber es ist auch genau richtig. Unsere Hoffnung bleibt, dass durch die Maßnahmen, die wir in diesem Jahr ergriffen haben und durch das, was wir nächstes Jahr tun, es uns gelingen wird, diesen Trend zu verstetigen, sodass wir Anfang des Jahres 2022 wirtschaftlich das Vorkrisenniveau erreicht haben werden und dass wir bis dahin so viele Arbeitsplätze und Unternehmen wie möglich gesichert haben, sodass sie für die Zukunft unseres Landes weiter ihre Tätigkeiten Somalia's President Mohamed Abdullahi Mohamed has appointed a new Prime Minister hours after broken agreement with regional leaders for elections next year that abandons a promised one-person, one-vote model. The President's office announced late Thursday the appointment of Mohamed Hussein Robley, a Swedish-trained civil engineer. He fills a vacancy left when former Premier Hassan Ali Khaya was removed by Parliament in July for failing to pave the way for fully democratic elections due before February 2021. The foreign-backed government in Mogadishu has been in drawn-out negotiations with Somalia's federal states over how to proceed with parliamentary and presidential elections. Neum has a stain. New refused 250 MPS vote the endorsement and approval of the new Prime Minister. As I already told you, ladies and gentlemen, I commit to forming a cabinet with good qualities that can move the country forward over the current situation and work for the, a free and fair election that is based on consequence among all. The United Nations Children Fund warned that nearly 65 million students remained out of school as one in two do not have access to any learning opportunity across eastern and southern Africa. UNICEF called on governments to prioritise the opening of schools and provide children with proper education to tackle the increase of violence in almost all countries. In this sense, the UNICEF considers that greater ch dangers for children lie by being outside of the classroom. Although 13 out of the 23 countries have resumed classes, the COVID-19 pandemic has jeopardised the instruction of thousands of teenagers about to enter the workforce. In this sense, UNICEF warned that the seriousness of the crisis means that a generation could be lost. The CEO of Tokyo 2020, Yoshiro Muto, said on Wednesday that Olympic athletes could face strict controls on their travel during the 2021 Games, with tracking applications and repeated testing among the antivirus measures proposed by the Tokyo 2020 organizers. We understand that the tests are one of the most important issues from the two perspectives of securing safety and the sense of security for athletes and protecting the public from the new coronavirus. The organizing committee would like each athlete before departure from their home country to take a test, would like the government to create a system or mechanism to continue testing when they enter Japan. And we've come to the end of this news brief, but remember you can find these and many of our stories on our website at tellysoenglish.net. You can also join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. For Tellysoenglish, I'm Katrina Goss and thank you for watching.